Good evening and welcome to you all for this service of evening prayer on Sunday the 6th of June and today has been the first Sunday after Trinity. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Song of Worship. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessing out of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As that evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 37, reading verses 1 to 17. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. Fret not because of evildoers. Be not jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like grass, and the green herb fade away. Trust in the Lord and be doing good. Dwell in the land and be nourished with truth. Let your delight be in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light, and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait for him. Do not fret over those that prosper as they follow their evil schemes. Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret, lest you be moved to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. Yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. You will search for their place and find them gone. But the lowly shall possess the land and shall delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord shall laugh at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those who walk in truth. Their sword shall go through their own heart and their bows shall be broken. The little that the righteous have is better than great riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The salvation of the righteous comes from God. Blessed and holy God, ever merciful and forgiving, may we turn from what is evil and do what is good in your sight. For you have saved us by the cross of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verses 16 to 21. Thus says the Lord, Stand at the crossroads and look, and ask for the ancient paths, where the good way lies, and walk in it, and find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk in it. Also, I raised up sentinels for you. Give heed to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not give heed. Therefore hear, O nations, and know, O congregation, what will happen to them. Hear, O earth, I am going to bring disaster on this people, the fruit of their schemes, because they have not given heed to my words. And as for my teaching, they have rejected it. Of what use to me is frankincense that comes from Sheba, or sweet cane from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor are your sacrifices pleasing to me. Therefore thus says the Lord, See, I am laying before this people stumbling blocks against which they shall stumble. Parents and children together, neighbour and friend shall perish. Here ends our first reading. Song of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and exult and give glory and homage to our God. 
Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, whose judgments are true and just. Praise our God, all you his servants, all who fear him, both small and great. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. Let us rejoice and exult and give glory and homage to our God. Our second reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 9, verses 1 to 13. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed for ever. Amen. It is not as though the word of God had failed, for not all Israelites truly belong to Israel, and not all of Abraham's children are his true descendants. But it is through Isaac that descendants shall be named after you. This means it is not the children of flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as descendants. For this is what the promise said, About this time I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. Nor is that all. Something similar happened to Rebekah when she conceived children by one husband, our ancestor Isaac. Even before they had been born or had done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose of election might continue, not by works but by his call, she was told, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, I have loved Jacob, but I have hated Esau. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat You have done great things, O God, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have done great things, O God, and holy is your name. So let us pray. So we give you thanks and praise for this day, Lord, for all that we have done, for the people we have spoken with and met with, the conversations we've held, for the rest and relaxation that we may have enjoyed. We thank you for the opportunity that we've had to worship today, for those who joined together in person and those who joined us online, and for all our brothers and sisters meeting together for worship today in various different ways. We thank you, Lord, that we have heard your word. We have made our prayers and received your sacrament. As we pray for our world today, so we continue to pray, Lord, for an end to warfare and violence wherever it is found. Lord, we ask for your gift of peace and for all those who work to negotiate peace in our world today. We pray for the work of the United Nations and for the leaders of nations and for the work that they do. We pray for all those who are involved in the fight against this pandemic, those who are continually trying to support the people they represent, 
those who feel quite overwhelmed with having so much work to do. We pray, Lord, for those in governments and those who support the leaders of nations and for all that they will do this day. So we pray for our world, Lord. So we pray for the beauty and wonder of creation we see around us as we see the changing of the seasons day by day by new life, new flowers, new blossom springing forth across our world. We pray, Lord, for those who work on the land, for those who are tending crops ready to harvest later in the year, for those who work at sea, that they would be kept safe. And on this day, we pray for the commemorations taking place for the D-Day landings, for the memorial that has been unveiled in Normandy, for those who remember that time, those who remember loved ones lost, and those who work for the British Legion today, for the support that they give to veterans and their families, and for all who are in need. For our prayer intention today, we pray for all those who hold office within each parish, as they look to how to unlock, that they would have the strength imagination and wisdom to enable each community to know it is prayed for, cared for and loved. We pray for all those who have been newly elected as church wardens in parishes and also those who take up the responsibility of being on PCCs. We pray for those who hold different roles and responsibilities in the church, for those who work with our young people and children, for those who are safeguarding officers and for many who, who carry out tasks behind the scenes. Lord, we pray for our parishes, for our people, for those we are connected with, for groups who usually meet within our buildings. We pray that as we come to unlock over the coming weeks, we would do so carefully and with caution and with respect for one another. And so we pray for those who are our key workers, for those who go out to work and those working from home, for those who will be returning to work this week, for those who still hold anxieties and fears for the future, for those who have been unable to work, those who have lost their employment, those who are still furloughed, those whose businesses are still closed. Lord, we ask that you would be with them and with the anxieties that they fear at this time. We pray for all those who try to help in our communities, for those who provide care, for those who feel isolated and lonely, those who work in the food banks and food larders, providing food for those who are in need. We pray for CAP and for the credit unions and those who work with those in debt. We pray for our young people as they prepare to return after to school college and education after their half-term holiday. We pray for those who this term will be preparing to move on to the next stage in their education or out into the world of work. We pray for those who've been unable to take exams and for the anxiety that that has placed upon them. We pray that as teachers prepare results, they would do so fairly and with good moderation across all those who are waiting for them. We pray for those who work in the medical profession. We pray for all who work in our local hospitals, for those who work in intensive care units, on the wards, in operating theatres and behind the scenes, praying also for our hospital chaplains and the work that they do at this time. We pray for our hospices and hospice at home, we pray for those who are working and living in care homes and sheltered accommodation, for nursing and residential homes, and those who've been able to visit their loved ones today. We pray for those who are carers, those who work out in the community, providing support and care for people in their own homes. We continue to pray for our GP surgeries, 
pharmacies and health centres and for all those places that are vaccination hubs today. We give thanks for those who are giving vaccines and those who will receive them. And we pray for a continuation of the rollout of the vaccination programme as a way of being able to return to normal life. So we bring to you, Lord, those we know who are unwell at this time. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. And we name before you David, Alan, Jeff, John, Jim, Elaine, Kath and her family, Christine, Sister Catherine, Douglas, Steve, Joanna, Jean, Jane, Eric, Andrew, Judy, Helen, Scylla, Linda, Jack, Cheryl, Joyce, David, Audrey, Alan, Irene and Terry. Lord, we pray for them and those we name in the silence of our hearts this evening and ask for that healing and wholeness to be granted to them all. And so we pray for those who have died. We pray for those who have died this past day, for those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, we pray for all those who mourn, who carry that pain of bereavement with them, asking that you would give them the hope of the resurrection and the joy of eternal life still to come. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, on God, now and for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of evening prayer this evening. It's been lovely to have your company as always. Do hope that you have a good and peaceful evening ahead of you. Tomorrow we will be having our service of morning prayer at 9 o'clock and evening prayer at 5 o'clock if you're able to join me for either or both of those services. In the meantime, do take care, stay safe, look after yourselves and you remain as always in my prayers. Do take care.